Previously, we looked at how a single charge or maybe two charge interact with each other. Okay, but now what happens if you throw them all together? What actually happens? How do the graphs of electric field strength and potential look like? This is a very nice picture, I thought. Three charges. Blue is one and red or pink is the other charge. And look at the electric field pattern. Isn't it beautiful? So the green color patterns are the electric fields. Can you guess which one is positive, which one is negative? And if you look at these curvy lines, these are the equipotential lines, means all along that line, you will have the same potential. That's why it means equipotential. So if this is 10 volts here, all along this line is 10 volts up. Kind of like climbing a mountain, you know, many peaks on the mountain. If you hike along this equipotential line, you won't go up, you won't go down, you stay at the same height. Okay, so let's take a look at what kind of graphs we can draw out of these ideas. So the first one you can see is, well, single point charge, we already looked at that. Uh, what if you have two or more? Let the fun begin. Let's start off with uh, a situation where they have different charge. On the left is a positive, on the right is a negative. So, hmm, these are point charges, right? Pair of point charges. Let's up the level a little bit. And now we say, what if they are charged spheres? So for the red one, it is a sphere roughly the size of this. Can't really see lah, but you, uh, you roughly guess lah, okay? And the blue one, the sphere size is roughly here. Can you see my light blue circle? Okay, it's a charged conducting sphere or spherical conductor. The first challenge for today mm, is, now there's two spheres. How would you draw the electric field against distance between them? I guess X lah. The axis is set at the center of the red color sphere. So how would you draw the electric field strength? Oh, I guess just the electric field. Let's start off by thinking of the electric field due to the charge on the left, the red color one. Inside the charge, uh, inside the sphere, sorry, what's the electric field? We know it's zero, so start with zero. Lah. So you can start off by drawing a zero point down here. Okay, the blue color one, what's inside the sphere? Zero, lah. so you start off with zero. Lah. Then, for the pink color charge, it will start off with a very high electric field, so maybe somewhere here outside the, outside the thing. So it will look something like this. Let's keep on going to infinity. And then for the blue one, it will start off somewhere here. I'm assuming they have the same charge, so they're going to look something like this. Oh man, my right hand and left hand drawing is a bit different. There, I kind of fixed it. <laughs> okay, so these are the fields from different charges. Let's call the charge on the left A and the charge on the right B. So charge on the left A will be having this curve law. This is charge A, E A. Okay, and the curve on the right, this one is from charge B, E B. If you combine the whole thing together, you get this diagram here. See these arrows, all these vector diagrams? This is the resultant electric field. And it's basically adding together both graphs. So if I want to draw the resultant field, I have to kind of do some addition here. So I will add something like this. Okay, you get the idea. This is the resultant electric field. Um, notice that this is all in the positive part of the axis because... Because... I define going to the right as positive. So all this moving to the right is positive, right? Here's still moving to the right, lah, so electric field is still positive. Don't forget, ah, electric field is a vector, okay? In vectors, direction matters. So all this is still moving to the right, to the right, to the right, all positive. Okay, sure. Uh, if I take it immediately between them. Lah. So this is how the resultant field add like. Lah. You add up both curves, you get the resultant electric field. What about potential? V. Hmm. Let's start off with the V inside the curves first, because that's what we know. So for charge A on the left, it's positive V. I don't know how many volts, it's probably 100 plus or something. Here already 20.2. So adding up that one, I would probably end up at some very positive value. I don't know what that is, but somewhere up here. Lah. Okay, that's the potential inside sphere A. For sphere B, assuming that it's the same potential that will be down here this will be potential inside sphere b then what happens outside eh? mm, from the gaussian video the one 
the charge charge sphere one, you know that it will kind of re reduce like that. Oh, wrong color. My bad. The first one will look something like this. And then for the blue one, it's upside down. So what happens when you add both graphs together? You had to draw the resultant potential between these two. It's kind of like mountains. Lah. Okay, so the resultant potential, I think here will be a little bit lower already. So here, maybe drop slightly. But it will still decrease, 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 decrease to a point where it will be zero. Oh, zero potential because you have to cross over, go to negative. Ma. Then here you add together, you go increase, 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 and then no more liao. Okay, here it's like that. Oh. So something like that, this will be the resultant. I think I will change it to a different color just so we can recognize it. There, I change it to green. Well, if you're a bit colorblind, I apologize in advance. Try to see which one is which, yeah. So resultant electric field and resultant potential. If you're wondering how this looks like, you could imagine a... Remember the volcano things that we showed you guys in the earlier video? I think it's somewhere... Ah, yes, this one, this one. So these things, what we call the volcano graphs, are basically 3D potential diagrams. Lah. So 3D potential to show you that it's actually like mountain and valleys. So actually, if you see this flat part, mm, what is going on here? So this is a, uh, if you have a positive and a negative charge here, and you make a 3D diagram of how the potential looks like, it looks like this mountain and valley. Lo. So if I ask you to draw, let's say for example, draw the electric field wow. at say this point, then you have to draw something like that. Because remember, electric field is the gradient of this potential graph. So gradient law, the slope. If I say what's the electric field here, you kind of draw it down this way a bit. What's the electric field on this side? It's going to roll off that way. Law. And similarly, if you have a negative charge, what's the electric field here? You kind of draw it going into the valley already. What's the electric field here? Going right into the valley. And also notice that the force electric field kind of the same direction if you assume it's a positive charge. So I'm assuming all these are positive charges. Huh? So a positive charge will roll down in the direction of all these arrows. Okay, Positive charge is going to roll down this way. Away from the positive charge. Because they repel. Why they repel? Because of this potential thing. Positive charge is going to go here. Positive charge really likes the negative charge. So it's going to roll into the valley. But be careful because negative charges are rebels. They are the opposite. Negative charges always go against the direction of electric field. So if I put a negative charge here, uh, it's going to go uphill. Voila, can like that one, man. Yeah, long. Negative charge will go uphill, okay? Oh, forgot to put a negative sign here. So just remember that positive charges follow, it's like mountain. Lah. You roll downhill, roll uphill. Negative charge hates its own self. So you put a negative charge here, it's going to go up this way against the electric field. Okay, enough of volcanoes. Go play with the simulation if you're curious to know more of and see the volcanoes by yourself. But let's look at one more, one more possible example where there is two charges of the same type. So in this case, I guess we could assume they are both positive. Lah. And there's no field diagram here. Oh. So you, I guess it's also good practice to draw your field diagrams. But let me first put down... The charges right here. So we have one charge and we have another charge which is a shell, a sorry shell, a sphere. Because you know you want to make things more interesting. So remember again if you want to draw electric field lines you have to make it perpendicular to all the potential lines so it's kind of looking something like that. Here like that. Remember how to draw this from AS? Forgot oh uh, you all this perpendicular la, perpendicular. So I'm not quite. So I'm gonna fast forward and draw a few more. Okay la, something like that la. <laughs> it looks like a face now, two eyes. If I assume all these fellas are positive charges, eh, positive charge spheres, then all these arrows are pointing away from them. Something like these. Oh yo, middle cannot connect. Sorry. Ay, uh, all here they repel, they will never connect to each other. Well, Something like this. Okay, so positive charge all away, away. Lor. Middle here actually got no electric field. So there's one place where it's zero. 
they repel each other. Also, what happens inside the sphere is also zero. Well, I've got a few places got zero. Oh. Here, oh. here, zero. Here, zero, and zero. Okay, I think we are good to go. So let's do the first challenge. Draw the electric field first. So E against X. The center is the middle of the first sphere. I'll call it sphere A and sphere B. So for sphere A, what's the electric field inside? Zero, right? Okay, so you draw a zero. What's the electric field inside sphere B? Also zero, oh, so you zero. But what happens in between? This one, you got to be a little bit careful. Remember how I said just now that directional electric field matters? I said to the right is positive. But if you look here very carefully, uh, here is going kind of to the right, but here is going to the left. So there is a change in direction almost. I mean, those electric field lines don't connect, but there is a change in direction. Okay, if I draw, kind of I draw this line here, I draw this line here, and then go up. One is pointing to the right, the other one pointing to the left. In the middle, there is a zero point. So right in between both charges, we need to pass through this zero point. Wow, like that how? Uh, okay, la. so let's draw the first sphere first. La. Let's call the first one light blue. So for the first sphere, you will have an electric field that starts off pretty big. So I will draw something like that, but goes down to zero. Why? La? Because I am taking the path between both fields. Ma. Wow, this is a very big path. Let me use a smaller one. I'm using the path. I go from here. I journey, travel, travel, travel to the right. So I will start at zero. Then somehow I decrease to zero. And then something happened. And then zero again. So that's why I do that. For the second sphere, I'm going to use dark blue. Just so I can differentiate between both of them. So what happens here? Hmm. Oh, yo, I just remembered one more thing. I was drawing the resultant one already. Electric field. Sorry. From the left one, it goes all the way to infinity. I won't draw the whole thing. For the second sphere, the electric field is actually in a different direction now. The arrows. So, you're going to start off something like this. Let me see if I can get the heights the same. Ah. This one is roughly there. So, the other one should be roughly here. So, something like this. Suddenly jump up. And go over infinity, zero, zero, whatever. So, how will the resultant look like? Leh? Let me use red color. Sorry, I keep changing color, but never mind. So, on the beginning part, if you add it together, it will start off like this. Pass zero. Ah, now the resultant pass zero. And then, go to the negative part. Okay. So, this is the resultant electric field. Please be careful. The middle, exactly in between the charges, if they, if they have the same... In between the spheres, if they have the same charge, there will be a point where they cut through zero. And this is from sphere A. This is from sphere B. Electric field due to sphere B. Okay, so that is how the E will look like. How about potential? Hmm. Potential is V against X. Now, do you think about this one? Now, both of them are positive charge, right? Positive charge, positive charge. So they both, if this one is positive 10 volts, it's also positive 10 volts. So you can start off by drawing the voltage inside of the charge sphere conductor. La. So in the for charge for sphere A, you're gonna have some voltage, VA, I guess. For B le, also same la, inside. So this will be VB. What happens outside? Well, this one is where you have the V proportional to 1 over R graph outside of the sphere. So this one will be something like this. Just go, go until infinity la. Then the other one will go this, da, 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 all the way down. So what's the resultant? Leh? You may have guessed it already. Um, but your resultant is very similar to this one. Leh. But now the the other way around. Okay, so adding both together, you will get something like this. First, this part is a little bit higher. If you're wondering why a little bit higher, because here got some more very small thing. Leh. I just didn't draw the whole thing. Fine, fine. I will draw the whole thing. So your result will be a bit higher. Add together. Come here. Kind of like that. Go up. That is the resultant potential. I kind of like this color better than green. Okay, la, never mind. That one got many, too many color already. So key things to note about all these graphs in conclusion. 
Look at this beautiful picture. Wow. <laughs> Two things to note is where are things zero? You got to know that, okay? So on the right side graph that we just drew, where, where do we cross zero? Look at the E graph. E is zero between them. The electric field line, I guess you could call it cancel out in a way. I don't like to use that term, but E0 at the midpoint is one thing you want to take note. So I'll just make a note here. And how, how do we know that? Well, it's kind of related to the gradient of the potential graph. So if you look at the potential graph in the middle, it's a turning point. So if I draw a tangent to the curve, that is my E0, which is the gradient. So if we go back to the volcano graph, where's the volcano graph? Ah, this is example if you had a positive charge here and another positive charge here. So the top is very high potential. This will be, what the color did I use? Uh, VA on top, VB on top, and it's constant, flat. But what happens in between? Remember this graph shape? We basically drew this. La. We drew this in the graph, this shape. This is the resultant potential between both of them. So electric field, there will be a point where it's zero, which is right here. This one. Electric field, zero. Gradient zero, ma? If I want to put somewhere else here, electric field is what? Mm, for a positive charge, it's probably going to run away from the positive charge. So a positive charge would go this way, following the direction of electric field. If I draw here at the side, leh, also same, it will fly the other side, direction of electric field. That's where a positive charge would go. Okay, that's where a positive charge would go. Positive charge can maybe can chill in between these two. Lah. Okay, so all those graphs we drew were potential graphs and electric graphs, electric field graphs. So the highlighted part is what we draw. Lah. Here also, the highlighted part is what we draw. Here, suddenly go down to negative and then flat. Okay, so that's how you can relate all these things. You will see them a lot. Okay, so that was what we draw. Here, go down and then flat. A bit more gentle. Lah. Okay, here is go down and then come up. One more zero to note for the, the combo where they both have different charge on the left side is where is a zero point? You see this down here? At the midpoint, if these are these both spheres have the same charge, at the midpoint here, the potential is zero. Flat. No electric field, so kind of. It's an inflection point lah. Because gr gradient, gradient here, zero, oh yeah, it's okay lah, something like that yeah. Eh, sorry, did I say electric field zero? No, 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 V is zero, inflection point. On the right side here, E is zero, so V is at the turning point. Okay, so that is all for these graphs. After this, it'll just be a bunch of past years, all kinds of scenarios, two judges or more, all kinds of graphs for you to draw and interpret. Very fun stuff. So that is all for main stuff for chapter 17. After this, it's all application, you must do some past years for chapter 17. Or it'll be quite mind-boggling to do. Alright, so that's all for this graphs, electric fields. See you in examples video.